So these are the animals that we talked about. Uh, and remember, of course, all animals come from um, animal-like protists, all right, called coenoflagellates. And these will then develop into multicellular organisms like the sponges that do not have tissue. So that's how they split from the rest of the animals. The next big split is going to be the development of radiosymmetry and two layers of tissue or true tissues like the Nidarians have. Next, you're going to have development of uh, bilateral symmetry and three layers of tissues like the flatworms have. All right, and then that that split there is going to split in several ways. Some will have internal cavities and some will not. The ones without internal cavities are called acoamylates, and those includes the, the flatworms. The ones that actually have um, some sort of cavity, it's called pseudocoamylates, include the rotifers and roundworms. Rotifers will have a hard mouth, roundworms will not, and that's why they're different. But both of them will have complete cavities from mouth to anus, which the flatworms did not have, right? The next big split over here is going to be uh, whether or not you have, uh, your, how you develop your embryo. Remember, everybody in this branch, though, is going to have true cavities and called, going to be called coamylates. Now, among the coamylates, you either have radio cleavage of your cells, or you have spiral cleavage of your cells, or you have a mixture of both. If you have a mixture of both, you're called a lophophorate. If you have, if you have radio uh, cleavage, you're going to become what is called a deuterosome and developed from the blastro pore, your anus first. But if you have um, spiral cleavage, of, you're, going to, you're going to create the prudosome and develop into mouth first. Among the prudosomes, you're going to have the, the ones that have appendages and the ones that do not. The ones that have appendages are going to be called the autopods, and those split into other very diverse groups as well, including calicates, crustaceans, insects, myripids, centipedes, and other arthropods like the trilobites, which are now extinct. Uh, you also have the groups that of, of rhodosomes that do not have appendages, but may or may not have segmentation, including the segmented worms. All right, If they have segmentation, you're going to go into segmented worms. If they do not have segmentation, you have going to be a mollus. Now, notice that these will also have segmentation, so you could argue that all protosomes are fragmented. So segmentation may have been occurred earlier. Molluscs just uh, may have evolved before that. The strange thing, though, is that segmented worms and molluscs seem to be closer together, and so we're not exactly sure uh, how that actually splits exactly. So that's what we call the, those polyphyletic groups that where it's not clear where the situation is going to have to be split because segmentation is in both this branch and this branch. Uh, of the tree of life, but appendages are on this branch, but not on that branch, and this one does not have segmentation, even when this does, so, you know, do you go by appendages, or do you go by segmentation to split them, and that's kind of how it gets confusing. On the other branch, or the ones that actually are deuterosomes, you have two main groups, the ones that have chordates, and the ones that are not. The non-chordates have a sideways step in evolution, and they actually have radial symmetry, and they have uh, no, bi no uh, cephalation. The other ones are have are chordates because they have an internal support system. Now, some chordates do not have vertebrates, so the next step is development of vertebrates. Tunicates and lancelates are going to be the ones without that. Then you have the vertebrates, which include uh, the first types of fishes. Some of it that don't even have uh, jaws. We call jawless fish, like the lampreys. Others will actually have jaws, and we call cartilaginous fish, like the skates, the, the, the sharks, and the rays. Then you have the bony fish that actually have bones. And the next big step is the evolution of things like ray fin or skin fan fish. And among the, those, you're going to evolve lungfish. From the lungfish, you're going to evolve things like amphibians, which is the next big step. Animals that live half their life on land, half their life on water. And they will have gills when they live in the water and lungs when they live on land. So it's like a mixture between the two. The next big advancement is the advancement of development of tetrapods, or animals that actually have four um, limbs. Not all amphibians are tetrapods, though, so that's uh, the event that comes after the evolution of amphibians. But the ones which are tetrapods, some of them are going to develop into becoming reptiles, which are have scaly skins instead of, of moist skins, allowing them to live in drier environments. Among the reptiles, the next big advancement is the development of amniotic eggs, or eggs to protect their young that have several layers of protection. Uh, for among the ones that have amniotic eggs, you have turtles, snakes, lizards, crocodiles, birds, dinosaurs, and mammals. Now, some of those are actually going to have hard shells, and that includes the groups of crocodiles and birds. Others will not have hard shells, and that includes the turtles, the snakes, and the lizards. But crocodiles and birds are different from snakes and lizards in the sense that they actually have uh, appendages. 
Now, crocodiles and birds are also sh shared a, a group with the with the dinosaurs there. So it's basically the group that split into crocodiles and birds uh, split into crocodiles, which are the modern thing, and that group split into dinosaurs, and that group split into the birds. And so kind of that's kind of how it is. And I talked about that previously in the videos. Then from the ancient amniotes, which are a kind of reptile, you also have the development of modern mammals, which is the most advanced group of animals. That is the tree of life that we completed now. But I also want to show you that there's a different way of arranging this. Look, if you look carefully at this tree of life, you will see that they did it quite differently. They, did, they put the development of, of internal cavities before the development of, of protosomes and deuterosomes, um, which is the same thing than it kind of did. But they put the pseudocoemulates later, almost as, as the pseudocoemulates evolved from coemulates instead of the other way around. Also, they have the segmentation happening here on the annelida, but then they put the nematoda, which are pseudocoemulates, in a separate branch as well. So it gets confusing in a way because you have some pseudocoemulates here and you have other pseudocoemulates there. So see how you have different arrangements. And this is where we talk about parsimony. You are going to have to look at which one is more parsimonious, the way we did it or this way. And molecular data is being used to determine which way is best. All right? And there's a lot of confusion still, though, about the way or the order that the animals actually have developed. So I wanted to present you here with an alternative method. But the, the concepts are about the same, so you're not going to be uh, too far off. We think, by, however, that this one is a little closer to the real one, all right, the real branching that happened. So it wouldn't be exactly how I described. It would be more like this one. Um, but this is a more complex way of understanding it. So try to look at this and think of the way that the process could possibly have developed, all right? So another thing that's inter interesting to talk about is that this process happened across time and that these species evolved throughout time, all right? So... And we're going to talk about in a special lecture series we call The Origin of Life, about the order of this happen and the how, when it happened. So you're going to put clocking in addition to the, this taxonomy. And so when we talk about The Origin of Life lecture, you can list here, and we're going to talk about branches which are like this, proportional branches, so you can see the order of evolution in terms of a time frame for the evolution of these, of these kinds of animals. And I'll see you on that video later to talk about that. But that's, that's taxonomy. Three main domains split into smaller taxa in a phylogenetic tree of life. I hope you understand and learn a lot about the different kinds. And from here, we move on into talking about microbiology, where we will talk about these archaea, bacteria, and protist organisms, uh, and all, as well as viruses, which are the tiny microscopic kinds of life. All right? I'll see you in that video. And for now, I hope, don't do anything that will not make your mama proud.